it's quite interesting how Gallipoli, especially in Australian and probably Turkish society as well, has become almost part of folklore. And that's been sort of handed down from generations, originally from the veterans who served in Gallipoli and survived, or letters home we find in personal collections and museums. And um, these often tell about not necessarily the boredom of Gallipoli, because soldiers in their letters probably wouldn't talk about the boredom, but they'll probably look to spice it up a bit. And what you find is these wonderful stories coming through um, about um, um, you know, anything from sniping, not necessarily male snipers, women snipers. You also have myths about, um, from the high level, incompetent leadership. Um, you know, how these generals, how could they send their men into battle to the slaughter, which is the word sort of often overused and misused. And these are just fascinating to study and bring back down, examine them, and look at the facts and the truth behind them. And as you say, when we're on the battlefield, looking at the ground, and from the ground is a fantastic place to really tell the real story, when people can feel it, the experience, and look around, smell it and hear it and um, then relate the true stories um, to debunk the myths that have been around for many, many years.